musicians, pop lyrics, even sports. How does that relate to dogs and dog training? You might be a little bit surprised to find out that it does more than you realize. Hey guys, I'm Adria with Better Bond Dog Training. I've been helping people and their dogs for the last 14 and a half years. Truly love what I do and I talk about this a lot with my students in person. So I was the epitome of a band geek in high school. So I like a lot of analogies with musicians. I play a ridiculous amount of instruments. I spent more time in the band room than I probably did in any other room in the high school. So that might make sense as to why I, I think this way. So when you go and you're practicing music, and anybody who's a musician will totally understand this, you're playing the song really well, and you don't even realize that maybe this one section you're practicing incorrectly. And every time you practice it, you play it wrong every single time. And someone comes along and they say, oh, hey, this isn't correct. Go back and practice it this way. And you practice it a little bit and you get it a little bit better, but you tend to fall back into those bad habits again. Same thing with lyrics from your favorite song. I can't tell you how many times I have thought that I've known a song and all the lyrics to it. And I'm singing along and one day I just randomly get the urge to go look up the lyrics. I tend to do that on a regular basis. Don't know why, I just like to know what the lyrics truly are, especially if I'm having trouble understanding a certain section. And I look at it and I go, well crud, I've been singing this wrong pretty good consistently. And so the song will come on the radio and I'll play it and I'll sing it again. And then it's so hard for me to change what I've been practicing. And I struggle to get those lyrics right because I've been practicing it time and time again using the wrong lyrics. Now with our sports analogy, when you're a kid and you're playing basketball, right? You know, you don't have enough power to shoot the ball correctly. You're just not, you just don't have the muscle strength for it yet. So you start and you put your hands like this instead and you pop the ball up. And so you get in that habit. Now, if you want to go play on a team, you find that now the coach is constantly correcting you to do it this way over and over, and they're trying to practice with you. And it is so hard to break the habit of this to get to this rather than doing this, right? This is really the same for our dogs, right? They practice these same skills over and over again in a certain way. And if no one ever tells them that they're doing something wrong, then they never really understand what it is they should be doing, right? You know, talk about the leash pulling. When they're little puppies, yeah, it's not such a big deal. They're pulling on a leash, big deal, we keep moving forward. As they get bigger, it starts getting more and more frustrating and they're pulling harder. And finally you hit the point where you're exasperated with it and maybe you just stop walking them all together. And then when you do put them on a leash, it's just so over the top exciting that you feel like you have absolutely no control over what they do or maybe it's guests coming over. And when they were really little puppies, it was super cute when the dogs jumped all over people, but now they're getting bigger and it's not quite so cute anymore. And we start asking them when trying to get them to sit and stay and off and we're yelling all these words at them. But ultimately at this point, we sound like Charlie Brown's parents going wah, 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 wah in the background because there's a legitimate language barrier between us and our dogs. They don't understand what we're saying. They just think we're adding to the chaos because they're having fun. And so they're consistently practicing these skills the wrong way. And at no point are we ever taking the time to step back and show them how to make these, these decisions correctly and how these skills should be done. And so that's what I want you to think about. This applies to you, to your dog. This applies to you if you're practicing things incorrectly. You know, your dog's gonna consistently not have that success. So we wanna make sure that we're really sitting back and thinking about those skills and what can we do to help our dogs be successful? Do we need to take a couple steps back? Do we need to show them the right thing outside of the context that they're standardly struggling? And then for you, making sure that you're practicing things more consistently the right way. A lot of times for me, I put a video camera on myself and I'm gonna see, am I doing something that is making it so my dog is unclear about what that expectation is and what I should be doing to help them. So I want you to think about those things moving forward as you continue to work with your dog, things that they're struggling with, take a step back, see what they've been practicing and see what steps you could take backwards in their understanding to help them be successful. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you next time.